Folks, I'm here inside America's largest video game store, East Starland, which I'm quickly realizing may also be one of the weirdest video game stores I've ever been in. For example, every game in the store has a price, but no price tag. Their building is in the middle of a business district. And when the owner told me the story of how this store was founded, it completely blew my mind. But the best part is, folks, East Starland has opened up their doors to us to take a look at the internal workings of this business. We're gonna get to go through the trade-in process and get some trade credit to spend here. And they're even gonna give us an inside look at some of their inbound games from online customers. But where I wanna start is actually right here on the sales floor. Now folks, I have to be honest, when I first walked up to this store, I was very confused. This is what their building looks like. Not exactly what you would expect from a vibrant, thriving video game store. It's honestly more like what you would expect from a mid-sized printer ink company in the tri-state area. And as we head in here, I found out that the reason for that is this is actually not only their main video game store, but also the base for all of their online operations. So it helps to have a good amount of office space, which is off that way, by the way. When you come in the store, you'll be greeted with a nice little receptions desk here and then through this way is the actual game store and right off the bat you can really see the scale and the scope of this store. Starting off immediately to the right, we've got this glass case full of some of the higher dollar games they were saying over here. Some slightly more uncommon gems that might be in the mid to higher range. And then right off to the left here is their first Nintendo section. You can see a very beefy GameCube section right there. Some Wii U and Switch and 3DS and all kinds of complete DS games. One of my favorite features of the store is all of the complete console boxes that they have. And has decorations above all of the display shelves all the way down. And the best thing is, even when the shelving units stop, the consoles just kind of keep going on. Then in the glass case right in front here, it does appear that we have a good number of like sealed and mid to higher dollar titles. Just an absolutely massive Switch selection. And it does look like we have a good number of limited run titles as well. A bunch of Amiibos in this glass case over here. And then it looks like a good number of sealed 3DS games over here. Although it looks like almost all of these are the uh, world UAE versions. I mentioned they also have a monstrous PS2 selection back here. And I wanna use a game from here to illustrate how their pricing system works because I've never seen anything like it. You can see we've got Midway Arcade Treasures here. No price visible on the game to speak of, but we do have this little barcode here which should help us out. Now folks, one problem that almost all game stores face is that the prices for used retro games are constantly changing. So East Starland has solved that problem by setting up these computers around their store. Now, East Starland has a program that updates their prices every single day based on the current market price of each game. So you can scan the barcode on the games at each one of these stations and get a fair market price for each game with multiple condition options. As you can see, this copy of Midway Arcade Treasures has no manual, so we'd be paying $12.25 for it, which should be at or slightly below the current market value for this game. What this basically means is that East Starland doesn't have to spend a bunch of time repricing the thousands of games in their inventory because their algorithm is constantly doing it for them and making sure that every price in the store on every game is always perfectly up to date. And folks, as crazy as the scope of this store is, I'm told that the in-store portion versus online only makes up about 65% of the total business that they do. And between the store and trade-ins and support and refurbishments and online operations, the store has a total of around 40 part-time and full-time employees. And folks, hopping over from the PlayStation side of the store where we were to the total opposite side of the store over here, you can see we've got all of the Xbox stuff neatly organized. 360, Xbox One, and down there the original Xbox section. And a crazy amount of sealed PS2 and Xbox stuff underneath. Now folks, one thing that I hate about 95% of the game stores that I go into that East Starland has completely solved is that the main counter is always super crowded. Because if you have a trade-in or especially multiple trade-ins going on at once and people are also trying to check out, it gets super cluttered. But here they've got the trade-in counter all the way in the back for those people. And meanwhile, all the purchasing is done over up front and they've got multiple lines that people can form up there as well. And folks, now that we've been around the whole perimeter of the store, the last thing to show you is these middle aisles, which is kind of a mix of a lot of the cartridge, like lower dollar games out here. And then on this side, a lot of the like video game related collectibles. We're talking pins and figures and accessories. And who could forget, angry pillows. 
Now folks, a lot of you guys know I've currently been working up to trying to buy one of my Nintendo Switch Grails by buying at least one Switch game to put on my trade shelf in every single video. And that's what I want to do in this one from this case right here. And I was thinking to myself, man, if only I had some low dollar stuff that I could trade in and put that trade credit towards a Switch game, that would be awesome until I remembered I may actually have a couple such games. For those of you who didn't see last week's video, this might be very confusing. I recently bought a $40,000 video game collection from my new friend, Sean. I mean, if that's if that's what they're calling me, that's one of the nicer <laughs> things that they're calling me, so. And it looks like so far on my journey back to Kentucky, it's actually fared pretty well. East Arland, by the way, is located in Chantilly, Virginia. So that's where we are right now, digging through some of these. And I think I'm gonna try to find 10 or maybe 15 games. Like I think Rage would be a great one that I I couldn't really sell all that well on Amazon, but I could use to get some solid trade credit and kind of see how their trade-in system works. All right, so folks, the deed is done. I ended up picking out like 20 to 25 illustrious low dollar games, because honestly, I'm a little bit scared that not a single one of these is worth over five bucks, which is probably like one or two in trade. And I want to get something decent on the Switch to come away with. Also, folks, if you would please refrain from making any hairline comments, trust me, I know, trust me, I know. Get a hair transplant. The saddest thing is my doctor thinks it's because of stress. I was like, dude, I'm a YouTuber. I basically take naps for a living. And that's because I do all of Caleb's work for him. Now folks, I didn't realize this, but with their computer system, you can actually do your own trade-in. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Guess I'm not trading that guy in. So I'm just gonna scan the barcode of this guy here. Oh, dang it. Okay, I found it. So it looks like for this guy, we're gonna get a buck 50, but for this guy, we actually got like 530, which is pretty sweet. And folks, what I really like about this system is it allows you to go one by one and see how much they're paying for each item rather than just hearing like a bulk price that they're offering for like your whole stack of games at once. And ooh, baby, looks like we've got some money on this one. That's actually really good. All right, so folks, it's the moment of truth. These are all the games they could take. These are the ones they unfortunately could not. So I'm not, not going to be able to unload iToy today, unfortunately. But it looks like what they can offer pending inspection is... All right. 66 bucks. Don't tell them, but I totally would have taken 30. All right, so folks, I'm here at the trade-in counter now with manager Rebecca, who's been here Hello. for six years. Is that right? Uh, seven, I think. Seven I years, my track. mistake. She's gonna walk us through the rest of the trade-in process. So where do we go from here? Rebecca told me that once someone submits their games and conditions online, all she has to do is inspect the lot and make sure there aren't any scratches or water damage or any condition issues that could affect the value of the games. So while she did that, I decided to take one more look around. Now folks, you may be wondering why I'm not spending more time trying to find items to flip for my online store while in this store, for example. I'm already seeing some of the AAA games in this case that I normally would be making a play on. But the reality is when I'm buying from game stores, my model relies on finding stuff that's underpriced relative to Amazon, but their algorithm makes pretty much all their games just about on point when it comes to online prices. So at least so far, try as I might, I haven't been able to find anything that really works for my margins, but we'll see if I'm able to turn that around at all. In the meantime, as Rebecca is finishing up our trade-in back there, another employee, Colin, is gonna take us through a behind the scenes look at what I understand is one of you guys' online trade-ins, is that right? Yes, that's correct. All right, let's get into this. Now, Colin was a total champ, and let me dive into this customer submission, which included some very nice GameCube games. Mario Kart Double Dash, this has to be, if this isn't in your top five GameCube games, you might be a little cuckoo, that's all I'm saying. This was all such great inventory that I was honestly starting to get a little jealous for my own business, but luckily that's when Rebecca called me back over to check out my trade-in results. So folks, the inventory check-in process of my order is also finished, and it looks like we only had a couple minor deductions for some water damage here, and you said a missing manual there. Yeah, just a little insert. All right, and how much is it going to cost us? $2 was le less for those. Two dollars, okay, they so were folks. pretty inexpensive games, and since it's a right. percentage, it didn't affect too much, but... Well, that's the good news. Thank yeah. you so much for your help. Mm -hmm. So folks, we've now got $64 to spend on a Switch wow. game of our choice. Clearly, we have plenty to choose from here. And folks, I have to say that when I see a store like this, I'm tempted to think that like, you know, it's almost like always been big, but in reality, we know that every large business starts small. 
Before I even started filming this video, I got to meet the owner of East Starland, whose name is Chris, and his story astounded me. Chris immigrated from South Korea in the 80s with no education and speaking no English. He worked construction for four years where he saved up enough money to start a video game mail-in trade business in 1991. These papers here are some of the original marketing materials he showed me. Within a couple years, he changed his business model to an online game store and has been slowly growing it over the last 30 years to the 40 employee juggernaut that it is today. As I picked out my Switch game for the trade shelf, I couldn't help but think of all the comments I always get about how competitive the video game industry is and how it's not possible in this or that area or people don't have any money to start. And the question I want to leave you guys with today is, if Chris started with no money, no English, and no education and built this, what's your excuse?